Yo, what's up guys? New video talking about how to get a JSON. It's been pretty well known to use your JSON to gather data, to use it in some kind of app like the Summoners War Rune Optimizer or anything else. But I still keep getting this question of like how to get my JSON, which is actually kind of a weird thing to ask because most people don't even know what JSON is used for or JSON stands for or anything. But I'll talk a little bit about that later. But how to get a JSON for your Summoners War data. So, of course, you need the Rune Exporter. I already got everything installed, but just going to go over the things itself. This link will, of course, be in the description. This is where you get the exporter itself, and this is what you need to download to actually get JSON. What this program simply does, it's pretty much a proxy that everything that comes in and goes to Summoners War server, it reads that, and also the way back. Well, mainly the way back, actually. So everything you get from the Summoners War server, you read that, and from that you can actually create all of the data on your account. Is this any kind of hack or anything? Nope. Is this pretty much legal? Yes. It, well, not pretty much. It's, it's just legal to do this. Everyone is, everyone and their mom is doing this by this point. So you have a whole bunch of uh, versions that you can download. Mainly just go for the newest version, which is currently 48. And in this case, for Windows, for Mac, I'm not really sure which one is the best to do. For Windows PC, I recommend to go for either the portable or the uh, just the... Uh, installer for the setup one of these two so i would probably recommend if you have a windows pc like most people i guess you just have to download this one the moment you have that downloaded you will see this thing and this is how the exporter looks most people have already seen it pretty much uh, a thing you have to remember is this local IP, which you will need later to set up the proxy. And most of the times it's set on port 8080. Not really sure if it's a little bit too small to read, but I think it's doable. Um, port 8080 is used by some other things as well. For example, if you have an Apache server can use 8080. I think Skype back in the day also used 8080. Something like that. There's a bunch of things that actually can use 8080 on a regular basis. So what I mostly do is just go for 8082. So you're safe that it probably doesn't do anything else there. So if we start a proxy, it's now listening for any incoming data. Also, if you don't know how to set up this stuff, there is actually a help. And within the help, there is a whole bunch of stuff they even have for like the... Mumu setup, the Nox setup, probably Bluestacks setup. No, they didn't do Bluestacks setup. It is possible to put it on Bluestacks. It's just slightly more difficult. The easiest way by far to get your uh, JSON is by Mumu player. So I'm going to show Mumu player as well, which is pretty much these steps, but I'm just going to show you how it works. So there are a few shortcuts, a bunch of stuff. Um, I think what if I find an issue, report to GitHub. Can I get banned for this? Nope. As as long as like I've been playing Sonos while using this thing, which is all the way from the start, I haven't heard anyone get banned from just using this. If they say they got banned from just using this, in the end, it's mainly this and some kind of hack. Like uh, you got banned for a hack, right? It's it, it's putting a ragdoll next to a slime, and then the, the that team wins and the saying the slime was op. Like that kind of level we're working with. So okay. Let's get going. How do we actually set this up? Um, in most cases, I'm not sure if it's actually mentioned here, limitations, recent versions of Android, it does not work on that anymore because you need the certificate. And because of that, it's just fairly simple to just download an emulator, use that emulator to get your JSON, and then just close the emulator. That's the main thing what I do with the emulator. I just use it to get my JSON and then I just close it again. Are you going to get banned for using an emulator? No, pretty much not. If you use your emulator and you start macroing on it, then you start hacking on it. Yeah, then you probably get banned. But there, there's, I pretty much, I've been playing this game for seven years. I never heard anyone get banned for just using an emulator. I did hear people getting banned for using macros on an emulator or rooting an emulator or doing anything like that. But just using an emulator, I never heard anyone get banned. Maybe you get bad for it, but you just did something shady. That's the main thing. Also, sometimes on Reddit you hear these posts of like, oh, the counter support didn't help me because I logged into blah, blah, or couldn't explain where I logged in from. That happens, but to be honest, I never really know the backstory on that. And you will never hear a post saying like, oh, I lost my account. The counters helped me in support because 
only people that complain are gonna talk about that. Okay, I'm talking way too long already because this video could literally be like three minutes. So what we need to do is we have to click on get the certificate. If we check the locks, it's actually copying the certificates to a very standard path, which will look something like this. And if you actually open it, it looks something like this. Now, how to get your JSON working. So I already installed the Moomoo player. If you want to get Moomoo player, also link is down in the description as well. This is by far the easiest way. Um, because most Android's phones, they don't really work anymore to get your your stuff up and running. And it's just, it's just annoying. I do know some um, Apple phones, they still enable it to have it up and running. But yeah, it's, it's not that... It's not that common. For me, I just really recommend go for an emulator, that kind of stuff. I have this key set up at 111, very simple. And as you can see in the top left, I already have their certificate running because then it gives this network might be monitoring kind of error issue notification. That's how you call it. So in this case, you want to go to the App Center and you just want to install Summoners War. Maybe you have to log into Google uh, Play and that kind of stuff. You just download Summoners War, same as normal. Very simple. Wait, I got two instances running like that. Okay, I already got some as well installed. Main thing we got to do right now is, first of all, get the certificate here. And that's where Moomoo Player is so much easier than any of the other emulators because you actually have a shared files folder. So in this case, you can actually simply paste in this one. And you can put it here while it's already there in this case, but you can simply place it there. You don't have to email it to yourself. You don't have to do anything weird stuff to get it there or log into some kind of Google Drive, Dropbox, anything. It's simply there already. So that makes it very simple. So to enable the certificate, we have to go to security. From security, we go to install from SD card. And then it you can select your internal storage, and you can go for this uh, dollar sign Moomoo shared folder, which is exactly the folder that I just showed you. A way I can show you that it's exactly that one. If we create, let's say, a new file, I'm a potato. We go in this, we go in here, and it shows I'm a potato. That's how easy it is to get files to this shared folder. It's super chill. So we select that one, certificate name, um, for sure, banana. Oh man, I'm so good with names for sure. Bananas installed, it's so easy. So yeah, we have that probably it asks to go for a pin or a lock screen or anything like that because you're installing some security, whatever. You just set it to 1111 or something or 000, whatever. So yeah, that's all set right now. Then there's one more thing we have to do, which is go to the Wi-Fi, hold click and modify the Wi-Fi. And normally it's on none. You select it from proxy, you go to manual. You put in the IP address that's in your d d d d d d d this one. So that is mixing with that one or not mixing. That's the same as this one. And then your port is this one. It's that easy. You save it, you close it and you load the game. Okay, for the video purpose, you can see that I already got my JSON here, but something went wrong and gave a bunch of errors of like the full lock that was not accessible. You don't really need the full lock or anything, but the moment you open your summons bar right now, you got the certificate set up, you got the proxy set up both here and both started here. You immediately see you got your JSON file and you can do anything with that you want. Also, for some people that might have some slight interest, and most of the time I just do this and then immediately I just turn off the emulator because I got my JSON, I'm done, very simple. Um, I think for people that are like, okay, but what is JSON and it looks weird, I'm not sure what it's all about, let me show you. So JSON is very simply a export in JSON notation, which is key value notation, so... This is, for example, the key, this is the value, this is the key, this is the value, this is my mana. I got too much mana, last login, whatever. It just stores a whole bunch of data. So it's just a data notation. Because if you check what JSON stands for, JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation. So you're asking about, can you give me my JavaScript Object Notation? Kind of sounds weird. I use this a lot for work as well, but... 
this is kind of difficult to read because you got like objects within objects for example your stage list is a new array and within that array you have like multiple objects and that kind of stuff but this even goes for like this is all of the objects that i cleared for the scenario then you have like going to individual rooms which are all uh, named or like just named with numbers to keep it like small and not have like the full names in there which is then mapped to like certain because this probably could be like attack or defense and this could be the number or anything like that there is some mapping for that i looked into that before i know how it works and uh, you can you can even see like w when you got a uh a rune and you can see when you modify that rune there's a whole bunch of information about this thing but this is very unreadable and it's also like i don't know how many lines we're looking at pretty much 281,000 lines to read out my full account. I got too many runes and that kind of stuff. But what you could do with it, let's say you want to view it yourself. I'm not sure if this website is too happy with me going for 281,000 lines of a JSON in here. But this is a JSON viewer, and within a JSON viewer, you can actually check and like easier click through the objects. But it doesn't really like me to pull that much data in there. It's... Okay, so this is an easier representation. Can I zoom in a little bit with this? No, I can't really zoom on in on this website, but yeah, you can actually see like all of this. Oh, I can. It's just really slow. And as you can see here, this is just my account information, which the optimizer can use. Okay, it's kind of slow because this website is not really used with going for that much data. But there is a whole bunch of stuff. I can even see my friend list here. I can see favorite unit ID here. I can see like a whole bunch of my previous world boss rank. Oh, I got rank one. Is it so? I'm not sure. But yeah, there's just a whole bunch of these things that you can read in from here. There's actually some information that's not really used by one of those tools that if you are looking to build a tool, you can check into what is actually used in there. New Year Event Rewards. I have no clue what this thing is. Mm, okay. And sometimes there's also some new stuff in there. There's there's always there's always something. There's quiz info. It shows you when the next quiz is. And I think this is is would this be the number of how many times I filled in the quiz? No, wait. This is the amount of times I filled in the quiz. And that's the quiz that comes between like uh, farming and when you want to buy new uh, energy for crystals. So yeah, there's a whole bunch of things that you can actually see. And there's a whole bunch of things that you can actually do with this current season. Oh, you can also see when the season ends, when the season begins. But then it's in a timestamp of just seconds, so you don't really know what it's about. Uh, shutdown info, okay, starting time, remaining time. There, there's a whole bunch of things. So a whole bunch of these things are not used. A whole bunch of these things are used. So yeah, if you want to check into it, you can actually check into it. Uh, but most of the time, it's probably too much data you're not really going to use or anything at all. But just giving a little bit of insight of like, okay, what is a JSON? Is there anything scary? Not that much. And just talking about like how to get your JSON pretty easily. So guys, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, you can leave them down below. Also, if you have any questions specifically for the optimizer or the uh, exporter itself, I do recommend you to go to the Discord, which is also linked in the description down below. And guys, thanks for watching. See you in the next one. I might make some extra videos if you guys would like me to, to give some tips of how to use the optimizer. Because the optimizer, which you can see here, I got the pro version. Kind of recommend to get the pro version, but I'll talk more about that in that video. But there's a whole bunch of things with this optimizer that some people might use or some people might not use. This tool has been like de been de in development for like, what, four or five years right now. So there's a whole bunch of like things that some people might not use that is in there or could use better. So might do a video or two on that. But still, guys, thanks for watching. And see you later.